Hey guys, Funks my name here. Um, I wanted to show you some tricks to do with the uh, pin tool and things that you can do with it. And I, I worked out a little um, thing that might not have been so clear uh, in the screenshot that I put on the uh, on the Facebook and on Lost Marvel forum. So I'm going to show you how that works quickly now. Um, what I've done here is I've created um, just some basic lines for the face and I'm setting, well in fact I can't yet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference layer for the original layer and then I'm going to, try to triangulate that reference layer um, and then I'm going to assign that reference layer as the smart warp layer for the face. Um, in fact, just to make it easier, I'm going to change this to face mask. Okay. Right, so um, the nice thing that I worked out is that if you um, do this and then edit the original layer, it makes it much easier to select um, the bits of your image that you have um, already defined because you can click on a single point and then hit tab to um, select connected points do the same thing or just click on a line and it will select all those points now if I was to do that on a triangulated mask hitting a line will just do the, the, the just that segment and if I hit tab it will select every point on the entire layer so um, this is actually not very useful uh, when you want to edit the face. Um, and let me show you something because this this has now broken the connection. As you can see, I can move this because I, I went to the face mask and then I selected or clicked on the on the canvas and that put down a point here which looks like it's in the same place, but it's actually not referenced anymore. As you can see, if you right click that and then sync it back to the original layer it will snap back into place then you go to the original layer and that fixes it so um, took me a little while to work out why that was happening but now I've worked it out it's quite good um, it also means that while you've got these things connected you can use the magnet tool and I've ticked select selected points only at the top um, and then you can you can actually warp with the magnet tool which is really cool uh, for this particular use um, without affecting the layer um, the, the other points of the layer and, and easily being able to you know I can move later select another part like the top lip and then do the same thing so that's quite cool so that's a really neat trick for um, just being able to use your meshes more cleanly. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you another thing which I talked about briefly and you saw by in the other video where I selected the monkey but didn't have anything around the outside the monkey got cropped so what you can do is you can use that um, to create holes in your mesh so you see here I'll hide the original layer this is all triangulated um, so anything that isn't triangulated on your triangle um, layer is going to get masked when you're off layer zero. So now you see I've got exactly the same motion, but where I've hidden those triangles, um, it's now masked. So what this allows me to do is I can create a layer reference for the original mouth, and I'll call this I'll call this teeth. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll create a new vector layer which will be the teeth. Oops, I didn't name it. Teeth, teeth. And in this case, I'm not going to use any warping. I just want to be able to move these shapes. So I'm not even going to bother doing a reference. Um, I'll just do the, I'll cut the teeth out just by selecting them here. I'll do it. I'll add a couple of points in a sec okay so now I'll show you something else in a sec um, a troubleshooting thing 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, two closed shapes here. Uh, one for the bottom teeth and one for the top teeth. Uh, I don't want them to auto weld. So I've unticked that. It's just out of screen. But you saw how before it was kind of trying to snap um, and weld these together. In fact, let me just do it quickly here. Okay, so now let me just complete this shape. And now auto weld isn't on. I'm hitting enter to uh, weld these points. And then I'll just add some points just to tidy this up a bit. Now, I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping that because I made a layer reference of the photo, it's actually less resource intensive. I don't know officially whether that's the case or not, or whether you can just I mean, if you wanted to, you could import a completely different photo uh, with like different teeth um, and put them in there instead. So um, what I'm going to do is show you something. If I um, if I hide these, in fact, let me hide all of these. Now, I've got these two shapes and they're not field shapes. Um, so if I triangulate, you'll see that it's taken every point on the layer and triangulated all together into into one thing, which isn't what I want it to do. So I'm going to undo that. And now I'm going to actually define, in fact, no, um, I'll define these, each of these as their own closed shape. And now if I triangulate the layer, it will actually respect that and create these two shapes separately. Um, oh, it's these these were slightly too close to each other and I think it put them together. So let me just move these apart and then do the same thing. There we go. So now they're separate. I can move these back together. Let me show here. Um, okay, that's good enough for now. So what that does is that if I put this underneath so it's hidden, I create the teeth. Uh, the teeth, because they were referenced from the face, they're at the moment being using the face mask, but I want to use the teeth mask instead. So now, if I look off frame zero, I've got this thing happening. So I've got the teeth, I've got the face. If I put the teeth under the face, they're now below the face. And if I go to, this should be the face. If I go to the face and I move, oh, okay, I need to, let me just clean this up. This is warts and all, <laughs> problem solving. So you see how I deleted it, it kept a point here. So these are obviously out of sync. I'm going to resync these channels to the original. And so now, now if I move it, you see that it's actually moving without moving the teeth. So that's quite cool. Now. What I want to do is quickly just show you as an example what I can do with um, a bone. If I add a bone, oh, let me just show you. Well, in fact, I'll get yeah, I'll get onto that part. If I go to, uh, I'll create a bone layer, and I'm going to create a smart bone that will make the mouth open and close. So that will move the bottom teeth and the and the lips. Um, so I'm going to call this. Uh, bones, whatever. I couldn't think of anything better. So I'll drag these inside and I'll just create a smart bone. So I'm just going to create a bone and I'll make it um, have a, a, was a, no strength. <laughs> I'm struggling to get my words out today. No strength. It's still quite early and it's cold outside. Um, and so then I'm going to name the bone, um, I'll call it mouth. And then I will create a new action. That's already called mouth as well because I had the bone selected. So that's quite a useful feature. I don't, it, it may have been like this in 11, but if you have a bone selected and it's named and you create a new action it does that for you so um, it's ready for a for a for a 
smart bone. <laughs> right, now I move over here and I'll rotate the bone. And what I'll do is, now I can do things like this. So if I, if I close the mouth here, and let's just correct this so it's slightly less, ah, this got connected earlier. It's not really worth fixing right now, but I'm just um, making this warp a little less. So I'll just get this somewhere in between where it was originally created. Okay, so now I've got the mouth opening and closing. Um, in fact, here, I'm going to open it more. Okay, so you see that the lip is now underneath. Uh, that's from the teeth layer. But what what I can do is what I can I'm going to be moving the teeth anyway. So ah. so let's move these down just so it's slightly less warped. And then I'm going to do the teeth as well. So that's going from closed to more open than it was before. And if I go to the teeth mask here. Oh, why does it count these as connected? Ah, oh, they got connected here, which is something I didn't see earlier. But, oh well, let's not worry about that. I'm going to go back to the main line. And I'll just get rid of these lines for now. Not that one. Okay, so now they won't be connected anymore. Uh, what I'm going to do is go back into the action. And go select none. Select a point. Now if I hit tab, I've got those bottom teeth selected. If I go here, I'll just move them down. And then I'll go here move them up and so i think i moved them up too much or not enough yeah here we go okay so now if we go into the main line get rid of this and now I can just use this bone like I can any other bone. So um, so that's that. That will probably give you plenty to uh, think about. Now you see here where there are certain things that go in front or behind the teeth. If I wanted the bottom teeth to actually be in front of the top teeth, what I'd need to do is if I go to the teeth layer, uh, let me hide this and I'll select, uh, let me just cl clear this up here. If I select all of these shapes here, so the, the order of these shapes is um, controlling whether they're in front or behind each other. So what I did was press shift and, and down to bring them to the bottom. And that didn't seem to work. Hold on. What am I doing wrong here? They are moving up and down. Maybe that there's just no teeth here in that. Let me have a look here. Oh, you see, they they are in front. Um, it just wasn't very obvious where they were down here. Um, they are actually in front now, and so you can just control it that way. And that can be animated as well. So if you have 
um, if you go into vectors and then animated shape order it means that during your animation you can you can send these f front or back it's quite hard to see when they're behind the, f the face there but if I if I select these oh, and send that back there you go I mean there are some triangles I didn't get but you get the idea so now they'll be behind or in front depending on where they are in the in the timeline so as long as you just get your triangles right and um, in fact what would be easier probably is if you create a, a selection um, or a named shape so then you can quickly recall them and then just change their order that way um, that will save you some time but this is 15 minutes um, I wasn't planning on going quite that long hope you found this useful and interesting and um, leave comments uh, if you have any questions thank you very much goodbye